special welcome once again to everyone joining us in the auditorium, for those joining us on Zoom and also for those that are listening later. What's the most valuable thing that you've ever lost? Did you ever find it again? Or has it remained lost apart from the memory? But when you find something that you've lost, wow, that sense of relief and joy, when you have it back again, have you ima ever imagined how God felt when you came to trust in Him? Let me pray. Jesus, as we take some time to delve into this wonderful parable, I ask Holy Spirit that you would continue to speak to us, that you would open up yourself to us, that as we open up your word, that you would speak to us, that you would remind us of your truth and that you would help us to understand your love more and more. Lord, we commit this time to you for you to have your way in us and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. Lost keys, lost phones, a lost bag, a lost contact number from that cute person that you met the other night. It can be so many different things. It's enough to have you panic and tear the place upside down, trying to find whatever it is that you've lost. So people put up posters around power poles or do letterbox drops, or they post things on Facebook asking people to keep an eye out for that lost item. And then you hear amazing stories from people finding things and the lengths that they go to to return them to their owner like a waterproof camera lost by a tourist and returned years later. Today's lost parable is something that most of us can relate to. You leave something behind in the playground, a favourite toy that accidentally gets dropped and the tears flow. You're running late and you can't find your keys and the stress grows. In the Bible... There's a story of a person who lost one-tenth of their life savings. Here they were, trying to be really, really good, going without at times so that they could have some savings put aside. Like saving pocket money or putting aside a little bit of uh, your money for a rainy day, then you lose 10% of it in one go. Let's look at the story that Jesus told, as written down by Luke, in Luke chapter 15, 8 to 10, from the International Children's Bible. Suppose a woman has 10 silver coins, but she loses one of them. She will light a lamp and clean the house. She will look carefully for the coin until she finds it. And when she finds it, she will call her friends and neighbours and say, be happy with me because I have found the lost coin that I lost. In the same way, there is joy before the angels of God when one sinner changes his heart. So here's a woman specifically chosen by Jesus as the example in the story. It's no accident that Jesus talks about a woman. People who knew, knew that women are more likely to be financially insecure and without the day-to-day -day support of family, they would be living and struggling to get by, a hand-to-mouth existence, day-to-day. -day. But this woman has scrimped and saved saved up money, possibly saved up for years to have these 10 silver coins, 10 days of wages. Or in Australia today, it would be the equivalent of something like $1,600, $1,600 that she has set aside. Now, there's no suggestion that she had a messy room, 
But before, before there was electricity and light switches, you relied on a small window in the wall of your home or by keeping the door open to allow light in. At night, you needed an oil lamp and the flame to light up the room with dancing shadows cast along the walls. Ten silver coins, each a day's wage for the unskilled person. Pocket money set aside for weeks and weeks. And she has them, a stash of cash that she's been putting aside. And she counts them out. One, two, three, four. We don't know whether there was something that she needed to spend it on. Five, six, seven, or whether things were getting really tough. Eight, nine. No, that can't be right. Let me count them again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Where's the tenth one? Where's it gone? So she turns the place upside down, looking in every nook and cranny and crack with her lamp, trying to find that coin. And then finally, she discovers it. And she discovers it sitting in a corner somewhere. And there's that coin. And she celebrates. It may have taken her a minute. It may have taken her a day. It's tough to say how long it took her as she looked. But the last place that she looked, the lost coin was found. And with a squeal of joy, she called out to the town. Her girlfriends came, come running as they heard the cry. No sooner do they arrive, but they celebrate together. They all knew the value of that lost coin and how they would feel if they were the ones that had lost it. The shadows on the walls were not the only thing that danced that day. But that was then. So what about for us now? Maybe this is how you imagine things when, when it comes to God expressing joy. Yet in this incredible story, it sets up God front and centre, celebrating with joy and maybe doing a little dance when someone chooses Jesus, God's Son, to be their very best friend in the whole world. Joy more expressed like this. Just the sheer delight and celebration of sharing and being together and just the joy that that shows. The Bible says, there is joy before the angels of God. Luke wants us to know that God, the creator of the world, the creator of the stars and the galaxies and the planets and the Milky Way, God who created you and me, longs for us to accept Jesus' invitation to be a part of God's family. Being sorry for our sins, our stuff-ups, our mistakes, the things that we get wrong, and asking God for forgiveness to help to be the best that we can be. But there's a little more to this story. What are you like when it comes to sharing? A friend of mine, Donna, knew that I am not a good sharer when it comes to chocolate cake. So when it came time for cutting a chocolate cake that I think it was for my birthday, um, she comes along and she gets the knife and she takes this biggest, hugest chunk of chocolate cake and off she trots with it with a big smile on her face to teach me a lesson about the importance of sharing. For some of Jesus' audience, they thought that they were more deserving of God's love than others, that they deserve God's love and joy. 
They looked at others and people that look different, people that behave differently. These people, they were called Pharisees. And, and they looked at others who didn't measure up, that they weren't good enough, they weren't smart enough, they weren't rich enough, they weren't pretty enough. The Pharisees thought that they were God's favourites. But this story tells that Jesus tells, he wants to remind those who want to keep God for themselves, those who want to stay comfortable and stop the undeserving, the inconvenient, the, the naughty people from knowing God's joy. The Pharisees thought that these people only deserve God's judgment, not God's joy. Jesus wants to remind them that God's love is too good to keep for themselves and that it's so important to share God's love with others. Not just keeping it for those who you think are nice and deserve to know God, but God's love needs to be shared with everyone, even with the everyone that seems to be hidden in some nook or cranny or some back alley. God celebrated with joy when you invited Jesus into your life. And when we join the search for the lost, we also join in the celebration with none other than God, who celebrates before the angels. And God puts on the best show of all, showing his joy to all of heaven that can see and celebrate with God when someone wants to accept Jesus' invitation to be a part of God's family. Let me pray. God, your love is so much better than chocolate cake. Your love is so abounding as we heard earlier. And your love for us never stops. It never fails. But Lord, sometimes we know that Jesus, we can, we can be... Um, unhelpful and even at times resistant to sharing your love with others. That we think we're the ones that might deserve your joy and not them. Help us to see others through your eyes and the joy that you have when people come to accept you as their King and their Saviour. Amen. So how might we respond today? Well, I want to encourage you to do something a little bit different today, just for a few moments. I'm going to encourage you to close your eyes. And there's a few questions that I want to pose to you. To close your eyes in a moment and imagine what, how God might have celebrated with joy before the angels. Imagine that God celebrated with joy when you asked Jesus into your life. And if you haven't yet, then why not do that today? God is waiting to celebrate you. So I invite you to close your eyes. And I want you to imagine God and the angels around him. And I want you to imagine how God might celebrate. Celebrate with joy when the lost are found. What does God do? How does his face look? How do the angels react? Do they join in? And imagine if you've asked Jesus to be a part of your life, what it must have been like for God to celebrate when you ask Jesus to be a part of his, your life. With eyes still closed, picture in your mind those with whom you could share Jesus' love. 
God invites you to share with them and to help them discover God's love. When you're ready, I invite you to open your eyes and whether you're at home on Zoom and you want to just write um, a, a response in the chat function to Northern Community or for those in the auditorium, if you want to open your eyes and pull out the response card, I encourage you to write a prayer for someone that you know that they would come to love Jesus too. There's going to be some music played and as that music's played, I invite you to write that prayer to God now. God bless you.